Good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is O.P. Yadav, Editor-in-Chief of Indian Journal of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery and CEO of National Heart Institute in Delhi. It's a proud privilege to play host to Professor Paul Sargent from Leuven, Belgium. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Paul, we've been hearing about you and seeing you on lots of podium as a great proctor. So I want to pick your brains today on some of the aspects of proctoring, teaching, and learning. Some of these terminologies are really very new and confusing to us as cardiac surgeons. So what are the kinds of learning, and what's the difference between, say, the induced learning and the codified learning? When I was trained, um, I was partially trained in the United States. Oh, you were also trained? Yes. Um, I, if you were lucky, your boss said, see one, do one, teach one. Yes. Um, I think this is slightly simplified. Okay. Um, the translational, there's a lot to do today about translational science. Translational science is using the continued development of one science into another science, so benefiting from the work of an totally different domains. And the science of education has progressed. In fact, a lot of proctoring is more a social visit or a tourist visit. Uh, people are interested in the, uh, to go to a good restaurant in the evening. They are interested to um, do the travel, but they don't really understand the educational process. So to go down to the specific words that you have just used, I need to first position one component. When you come to me to learn, with all due respect, there is no need for it, but with all due respect, if you would come uh, to me to learn, I will never be able to share with you knowledge. Never. I will never share knowledge. I will share information. Sure. And that information is then transformed within you into knowledge. knowledge. This means that if there are five different people at the same time listening to the same information, these five people will get different knowledge because the information will interact with their own perspective, their own experience, and their own bagage. So that means that it gets already a little bit more difficult because you try to do well by sharing information, but the result is going to be different. Yeah. Now, what kind of information can we transfer? You used two words, codified and tacit. Now, let's look at this documentation of the hotel where we are, and where we have our convention. You see a name of a hotel, and you see some lines and dots. In fact, this is a lot of information and it is codified. This means that it has been deposited in either olfactory, yes. visual, text, graphics. This is easy to transfer. I just give this to you and this is how I can transfer the process. There's no need for you to come from Delhi to Belgium to be shared this information. So the first thing the proctor has to do is deposit his knowledge into as much as possible codified information. Yep. So why would you then come to Belgium, except maybe for the chocolate and the beer, why would you come to Belgium? Well, for something which is called tacit information. Tacit information comes from the Latin word 
tacitus, which means silent. Okay. So it is hidden information. It is hidden in the interaction between people, in the response on certain bits of information, and in their behavior, in their attitude. Can I call this as wisdom versus knowledge? I would not use the word wisdom um, because the translation of science has given it a name and that's the correct name. So I would suggest that we use the tacit. word tacit information because that means that there is a benefit in going and seeing something. But you must be open to this tacit information. You must capture it, you must visualize it. You are a clinician, you are familiar with the fact of like a Sherlock Holmes who searches for bits of information. And that's where you will pick up your tacit information. So tacit information cannot be transmitted in text? No. Can it be transmitted by word of mouth and by no, verbalizing? It's behavior, it's attitude. If you can transfer it by mouth, you can deposit it. Then you can deposit it. So and isn't it then a long process then? Well, I would say that the codified knowledge, the deposit of the codified knowledge, is something which continues over time. Because our, let's imagine that I am the expert, I put down today what I think I can put down. You ask me questions. If I can answer on these questions, I should deposit it and increase my codified information because that is easy to share. So in our proctoring and cardiac surgery, let me be very pointed in my questioning. Yes. What is the component of tacit learning and what is the component of codified learning? I would say that 95% of the information is codified learning. Only 5% is attitude. And that's tacit. And that's tacit, yes. So are you happy the way the proctoring is going on today in the Absolutely not. Proctoring has shown to be totally inefficient. Um, people are not committed. They are not ready. They, are, they have not studied before the proctoring process. Uh, they come as a tourist. In fact, a well-informed tourist has studied the, the books about the history of the country. If you come to India and you have not read some of the fundamental books about how India was created, um, you will miss a lot in, in the tourist visa of visit of India. So it's exactly the same thing. So if you're not happy, then what are the changes you propose? Well, I've been fighting for changes. Um, to give you an idea, it's also about a waste of my time. So <laughs> I have some personal interest. Um, to give you an idea, I have done 1,000 times three-day seminars. So that's 3,000 days of seminars that I organized in probably around 70 countries of the world. I traveled. I did the effort. But the proctees, yes. the person on the other side, has not done their homework. And that's not how it should be. So the industry has now understood this. There has been a change recently. Some of the major companies, and I would prefer in this talk not to name them, but the names are visible in the exhibit area, have now understood that it has to change. Sure. There is also liability problems. Um, and because they have not been structured, today it becomes illegal in most Western world countries to go and visit as a foreign surgeon in an operating theater. In the United States, in England, you will not come into an operating theater anymore. Um, and the reason is there has been no legal contract. So I want proctoring also to change from a legal perspective. What is a proctee, what will a proctee do? 
what will his relationship with the inviting hospital, because he creates a liability, maybe a liability for the patient. If the procti yep. contaminates the patient with, uh, um, with, for the sterility, there is a risk. So we need a number of formal legal documents. We need some memories of understanding for things that you cannot put into legal documents. So that um, also the proctor, the proctor versus the procti, the proctor versus the patient. To give an example, I have been president of the European Association and in one of the live sessions, a surgeon for an auditorium of 2,000 people said, I am doing the wrong procedure with the wrong patient just because he was invited in the live procedure to do a specific procedure. And I saw that same surgeon in Shanghai. I was sitting in the back in Shanghai. The same surgeon said, I should not be doing this procedure. Well, that's the liability of the proctor versus the patient in a proctoring session. The proctor must always say, I will do whatever is best for the patient. patient. If that means that the procti will not see anything, so be it. And who should pay for the proctor? Um, in today, today, um, I would... I would, can I rephrase your question with Please. all due respect? Yeah. Um, who should pay for the proctoring process? Proctoring Not just process. For the, okay, for the, the entire because gamut. There is, there is a lot of costs involved. There's travel, stay, expenses, time, yes. resources. I uh, meant that. Yes. So that whole The entire process. That whole process. I am personally convinced that there must be a shared partnership. Between the procti? The proc procti and the medical device and industry. The okay. Yes. Um, and I've been saying that for nearly 20 years. Um, when you go for a learning process, you're partially the beneficiary of the learning process. Of course, your patients, but also yourself. So maybe you should pay your travel. Maybe you should pay your stay. Now, in Europe, the laws have changed dramatically. And, um, uh, for example, I will be proctoring here in India after my uh, stay in this convention. And I can tell you that the Belgian government has yesterday morning, when I was in the airport, finally given the approval. And, for example, it has said that, that m the medical device industry cannot pay for my food and cannot pay for for some aspects of my travel. Okay. Yeah. So laws have become very strict in the interaction between the medical device industry, and that's okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just heard how the heart of Dr. Paul Sargent bleeds for a good proctoring. He impresses on what is called a tacit learning which cannot be codified either in terms of words or in terms of text. He's not happy, happy the way the proctoring is going on because he feels the procti is not doing his bit. And he feels that the financial aspect of the whole process should be amply shared between the procti and probably the industry. Well, thanks a lot, Paul. We appreciate your coming to India. And Thank you for your the, the privilege. Thanks a lot.